It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And there's no love lost between these AFC North foes. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. And it's coming up next on Madden NFL 24. Autumn has arrived in the mid-Atlantic region of the U.S. and it is a glorious afternoon at m and Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Today we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, it was a bit of a hectic offseason for the Ravens. The questions at quarterback, they went all the way till draft night. But in the end, Lamar Jackson is back, and these folks in Maryland, they couldn't be happier. No, they couldn't, and listen, they'll take a hectic offseason if it ends this way. Lamar Jackson back, taking every snap for their Baltimore Ravens. Brand new offensive coordinator. Don't be surprised if the ball's in the air. A little bit more than what we've seen in the past. Meanwhile, for the Browns, they come off a 7-10 season a year ago. Not great, but not a total loss either. Now, you think there are building blocks in place. They are there. Look at what they did last year. Their pass defense was number five in the league. Their rushing attack, sixth best in the league. They have players. They have a system. They just need to put it all together. Kicker Dustin Hopkins set to get this one going. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Ravens offense set to go to work, and it's Lamar Jackson now in his sixth NFL campaign who will lead the way. All the talk of Jackson leaving the Ravens this offseason was just that talk as the two sides hammered out a deal that made the highest paid player in the NFL. And why would they want to separate? When he has the ball in his hands, great things typically happen. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Now it's Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. But just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. First carry now for Justice Hill. Now the ball comes loose. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolded. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. And the Cleveland offense ready to go to work behind the three-time Pro Bowler Deshaun Watson in his second season now as a Brown, number seven overall. Just six games played for Watson in his debut season with the Browns, which really limited how much he could step into the franchise quarterback role for the team. But he gets a full slate to do so this season. Remember, his last year in Houston, over 4,800 yards. They expect excellence from him. And a nice little start as he's able to get this up to the 28. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Again, they turn to Ford. To about the 26 here. Second 
So from the 26 yard line, here's a second and eight. Back to throw, Watson. This is the tight end to Joku. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Over the middle, it's complete. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the Raven seven yard line. Here's Watson. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Sort of looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time ends up leading him just a bit too much. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Again, it's Watson. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Well, I know a defensive coordinator is going to be pretty excited about what he just saw there. Great knockback by their front. And now with the ball where it is, I would expect to see the offense throw the ball on second and third down here. Watson. It's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Hopkins with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, it turned into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball, get it out to him. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Jackson, options out left. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage, and he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 
And they run with Edwards off the option. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. From the 42-yard line, here's second and four. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. Edwards now on first and 10. And now off to the races, down the right side. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's gonna get this down inside the 40. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009, 2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. On second down, it's Edwards. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns 30. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll try and run for it with Hill. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. And this is going to be pulled in by the tight end Andrews. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They wanted to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit in the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. And they'll try to pound it in with Ricard. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Baltimore. Patrick Ricard taking it in from four yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from drawing level. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal, they don't do anything fancy. They just go to the fullback right away. I like how you phrase that because oftentimes they come back to the fullback when it's late in the down and distance count, right? In this case, first down, let's go get it right now. And he got it six points on the board. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. as they kick it away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth. 
if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. To throw is Watson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Now Watson. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Rocky Sam. And to the 40 yard line, that's where the return stops. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second and ten. Here's Jackson to throw. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage. It should be an impactful play because if you get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. From the gun on third down, Jackson. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they go to work on a first and goal. And Jackson throwing once more to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mark Andrews there, but it'll be second and goal. From the gun, Jackson. And in for the Ravens, touchdown. With Sean Bateman on the touchdown throw from Lamar Jackson. And the Ravens have taken the lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver. And that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there, 
tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Tucker with the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to So that drive spanned five plays, and it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. touchdown and there will not be a return here it's a touchback and it'll come out to the 25 yard line and now Cleveland geared up to take the field been a little bit of an interesting start the first drive for him Charles they had the passing touchdown the second drive he threw the interception so we'll see what this third drive of the ball game brings. Yeah, it's got a tiebreaker, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's the tough part for them and for him because, yeah, things went really well on that first one, not so well on the second one. He wants to get back to what he did to get this game going. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Elijah Moore, the intended receiver, and it's third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing on third down, Watson. Deep ball for Goodwin. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. On fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. Fielded at about the 28. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns, it's got them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an ideal spot now to create some separation. The way that they're functioning on offense now, they can create a pretty good gap. Allows their defense to play with a little more verb and confidence. That big article in the paper this morning about them stringing possessions together for consecutive touchdowns. Well, right here, they're trying to make it three in a row. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a yard. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Now Jackson on first down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Well, touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Jackson gonna give this one to Edwards. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sip through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. On third down, Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. A big play that time on a catch and run. 37 yards. This one made the West Coast off 
offense a staple around the NFL in the 80s and 90s. You don't have to push the ball deep downfield to come up with big plays, and there's an example of that right there. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Throwing is Jackson. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Rashad Bateman with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Ravens have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Touchdowns on their first three possessions, and they're a PAT from going up 21 to 7. Yeah, very impressive the way that they've moved the football. Full command of their playbook, full command of the way they wanted to attack. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. to A drive that time of six plays, and it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. Touchdown. On the return, here's Jerome Ford. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. Cleveland offense making their way out. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? This is Ford. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Here's Watson. And this is going to be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yes, yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. Yeah, they're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Fair catch taken right at the 10-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 11. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And now it's second down. Off the draw, here's Hill. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. 
That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead. Pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. Oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment gets mixed up. That's the end result. Off the option, here's Edwards. And that's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. Jackson options out left. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. A give for Edwards, running right. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Back-to-back -back runs that have been stacked up. Yeah, and now you got to say to yourself, what do we go to to try and get this running game going? Do we change up formations? Do we change personnel? Do we get a little more movement pre-snap? All those things are things that they should be doing anyway. Because unless you've got superior talent... And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They will start this drive with four. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Second and nine. Watson now to throw. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. From the 50, it's Watson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Browns first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. On first down, it's Watson. That's complete, it's Elijah Moore. And he's gonna get this inside the 30. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. They run with Ford. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, 
but from both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. This thrown quickly on to Cooper. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now it's Watson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, Watson. Throwing middle, and it's complete. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. I think that was a pretty good read right there. They caught him in zone defense and went to the hitch. And because they're in zone, that creates a natural space between the defenders and the receiver, able to get it to him quickly and let him get upfield. Again, it's Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Marquise Goodwin, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Extra point good by Hopkins. And they're back with it, a touchdown at 21-14. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. No run back here for Duvernay. Touch back out to the 25. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. From the gun, it's Jackson. That's caught. Back up. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. First and 10, it's Jackson. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now it's Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46.
Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This was the old NFL record distance for decades, a 63-yard attempt. And he hits the up one, but it caroms in anyway. But plenty of distance there as he banks it in. So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a couple of high octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you'd have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. A gain of eight there on the play, and it'll be second in a couple. On the ground, it's forward. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Out of the gun, Watson. Man open, it's Goodwin. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll try the left side. Four. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. How about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. The Browns send out their punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. 
We've got a close game. The offense has played well, but right now they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. They also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. On second down, here's Jackson. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Ravens first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. The quick feet by Jackson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. And they run with Edwards off the option, and he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Jackson on first down, over the middle to back him. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second down and two. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. Looking for Bateman. He's got him complete. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. keeper that was a good strong run for a first down and they are just dominating right now on this drive they've stayed on the field which consequently means the opposition's offense can't get out there and score any points throwing now jackson on first down that's into the hands of edwards and he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now Jackson on second down. A short throw caught by Andrews. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Brown 16. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down.
Jackson will throw again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Jackson now. And to find the open man. That's complete. And the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. And the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Jackson from the shotgun. Touchdown! Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens are able to widen their advantage. And that's a drive that makes everyone happy on that bench because they accomplish exactly what they set out to do. Take care of the football, eat up a little clock, end up in the end zone. Now they've got to push it for the rest of the game. So they didn't just help themselves offensively. They helped their defense out as well. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it's Mark Andrews who finishes things off with a touchdown reception. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now. To throw is Watson. This is Akins hauling in the short pass. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. First target, first catch at a first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On first down, Watson. A quick throw there is incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. And we're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and 10. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To the air yet again, Watson. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Well, if these guys wanted to get 
right back in this game. They needed an almost perfect second half and down three scores. A lost fumble here certainly doesn't fit into that plan. That reminds me of my plan in college to get an A on the papers I turned in, but that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> too many mistakes by both of us. <laughs> I mean, that's just pure and simple. And that's why that's exactly where they are in this ball game. They're going to need a huge turnaround if they want to try and win this one. After the fumble recovery, it's Jackson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Here's second and ten. Now Jackson. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. Well, CD, that helps the home team as they try to erase this deficit, give them the penalty for pass interference on the defense. Yeah, and they certainly haven't been happy with what they've seen so far, have they? They're certainly hoping that that call now might get the fans back into this one. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Rashad Bateman, 51 yards. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. And certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary, a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 24. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. The Browns set to take over. But it's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnovers. The turnover on the last drive, they had the issue in the first half as well. And that's really, unfortunately for them, helped to put this game out of reach. And you know they won't admit it to themselves. But we know that winning the game is pretty much out of the picture now. So their bottom line is how do they play a clean game the rest of this one, right? Take care of the football, no more turnovers, and see how that works. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Watson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands? Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? Now, a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They try to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now it's Watson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. 
The Baltimore Raven offense returns, and we see wide receiver Rashad Bateman bringing him out. Oh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Take him over to our team so we don't have to cover him anymore because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know if that mid-game train is going to happen, but good thought. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver, but he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front, so if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him picks up three on that carry. And a very short pick up there across the 15 to the 16. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. They'll come up facing third and five. Throwing is Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They have certainly looked his way in this third quarter. Another catch, and it's good for a first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Jackson, option right. And now look at him go. There he goes again. Inside the 20. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 73 yards. And the Ravens have sewn this one up as they add to their lead here in the fourth. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd like Lamar Jackson. And I really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all, but I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also electrifying us, and we're calling the game. This guy is simply sensational. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. On first down, it's Watson. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And he gets up near the 25 to about the 24 before going out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants them to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late points. He wants his lead to stay right where it is. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down.
Here's Watson. He finds his man complete. It's Ford. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Back to throw, Watson. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. He's certainly one of those quarterbacks who can burn you with his mobility, but that time able to hem him in and get him to the ground. Perfect descriptor right there about how they kept him in the pocket. Excellent job of containment, but they were still able to continue to bring such strong pressure without letting him escape. But how about those guys in the secondary as well? Kept the coverage tight, plastered to the receivers, and left no real options for him to throw it downfield. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. And this offense on third down today, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and four. Here's Watson. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. It certainly appears that he's been able to get a read on how they've wanted to contain him in this game. He's seen some places where he can beat them in big spots, and right there, he slides in with ease for the first down. Now a first down throw, Watson. No bottled up fumble. It's out, it's loose, and it's picked up by the Ravens. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble's gonna matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth, it doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline still scratching his head. Yeah, not only scratching his head, but probably writing a note or two about, we're gonna address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point, but being sloppy throughout the game, not gonna help him improve. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 36 yard line. And they'll run the option to start the drive. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. Credit Zadarius Smith able to get through and make that tackle for a loss. Well, he's had success running the football on this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. Oh, this one that may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. On oh, the option right is Jackson. The tally there, minus eight yards, leads to fourth down as well. Well, so much for that possession. Yeah, I think he tried to do a little too much there, partner. He tried to keep it himself. Ended up getting buried in the backfield, and that brings up fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And out will come the offense as they take over. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. 
Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. On second down, it's Ford. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. They'll come up now, third and three. On third down, four. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Ford. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. 68 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. To throw on second is Watson. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Hunt. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Now Watson. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. They'll try to run for it with four. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Jerome Ford. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Browns get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth-quarter deficit. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And the lead is down to 24. That time, a nine-play drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 
Here's Edwards again on second down. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 35. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. A yard all they need, but it's third down. They'll try and run for the first with Edwards. And he gets it down to the 32. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Again, it's Edwards. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And just shutting him off there. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 67 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. I know we're there, wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. There's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.